Hello, and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, April the 14th. I'm Eric Wilkinson, and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from mainstream media, where I've talked about the economic data, geopolitical environment, how those two come in to impact the markets with some of my market analysis. I do the same thing in these daily market commentaries, but I also talk about these option strategies I'm implementing into my portfolio based on those assumptions I come up with with my market analysis. And for you folks out there, what I've done is created all kinds of different courses for you guys to follow along, which will streamline your process in finding the optimal option strategy for any given assumption. Bullish assumption, we don't just go straight to buying a call. We look at what's going on in the pricing and see if those options are cheap or are expensive. And I show you how to do that really quickly uh, in these daily market commentaries. You guys will have a solid understanding of options after watching these videos. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with the economic data across the pond. We got industrial production coming in line with expectations at negative 0.1%. Um, and then we also got here in the United States, moving over here quickly, got importer prices month over month coming in a little bit hotter than expected. Now we've been seeing producer price indexes uh, increase. We've seen consumer price index being, uh, you know, uh, those higher prices being passed off to the consumer in the consumer price index. So we're seeing those inflationary pressures across the board. Uh, we also saw it with the import prices today coming in at 1.2% expected to be 1%. That should probably make bonds start to come off, interest rates start to rise as that is the expectation. Uh, interest rates rise with the rise of inflation. Now, we also got here, uh, we got Lagarde speaking, and today is the last day these uh, Fed members will be able to speak. Uh, it, actually, sorry, that's for the ECB. But here in the United States, FOMC members, uh, Williams, uh, Bostic, Clarita, uh, sorry, uh, Clarita, uh, are all speaking today. It's going to be the last time they can really talk about Fed policy before they go into that two-week lockdown. And we also got the crude oil inventories coming in at a drawdown of 5.9 million barrels, expected to be a drawdown of 2.4 million barrels. So we're seeing Continued drawdown, not uh, that means demand. We're seeing actual demand happen for these products, for the byproducts of crude oil being distillates and gasoline there. And then today, we also get the beige book. That's released two weeks before the FOMC gets their blue book, but it's very similar. It's gonna be slightly updated, but this is something we're gonna wanna keep an eye on here because it is one of the major uh, uh, data points that the Fed uses in order to determine interest rates. So we're going to keep an eye on this. Yes, they do get a, a closer look at, uh, at the time of the meeting, but this is something to give us not much is going to change in the next week or two. Okay. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on. And then some other things that are really driving these markets today is earnings. We've seen the bank earnings come out. JP Morgan did better than expected. Goldman knocked it out of the park. Wells Fargo uh, was struggling a little bit and JP Morgan struggling a little bit because they were talking about um, that they didn't see their fourth quarter do as well as some were expecting. So we saw a little bit of weakness there despite the fact that across the board, uh, these banks were beating the headline numbers. Bitcoin, something to talk about Bitcoin. We're seeing some weakness here. It's down $700 after making a new all-time high of 65,000. Well, today we've got Coinbase being released and it's basically the digital wallet for all of these cryptocurrencies. I'm looking to get involved in that. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Hopefully they open up trading. I've kind of held off on doing this daily market commentary to see where that is going to open up. But Bitcoin going higher based on this uh, Coinbase probably and the uh, IPO and all of the hoopla around that really going to drive some uh, of these cryptocurrencies higher, I believe, at least today. But is that the top? We don't know. We saw that topping pattern there in Bitcoin. That could be one of those situations where we talk about, does the market try to hurt the most amount of people as often as it can? Well, this could be one of those situations where everybody starts piling in and the market turns on it. So we're gonna watch that as well. I am still interested in getting into uh, uh, Coinbase and uh, not necessarily Bitcoin, but I want exposure to that broader space at this point. Gold futures coming off just a little bit here. As we talked about with the bonds, you can see they are coming off today. That means a little bit higher interest rates. Most of that's going to be on the expectation of higher or hotter than expected inflation uh, that we've been seeing lately. Uh, 
Crude oil, not surprising. We're seeing a nice big move to the upside up into the 62. We're not probably going to break down into that 50 handle anytime soon if we continue to see the demand for crude oil uh, ramp up here, which we've been seeing as of the last several uh, data points on crude oil inventories. And then we've got the NASDAQ off just a little bit today. For the most part, I think it's more consolidation than anything. But the VIX is signaling a bit of a bottom here, as we can see here. Are we going to start seeing volatility start to creep? Are we going to start seeing volatility start to creep back into this market? It feels like it at this point. We're at all-time highs. People are a little bit nervous about earnings. That's going to be a time where people start to look at uh, add some exposure or some hedging opportunities. Another thing we're going to see here is the earnings, like we've seen a couple of these, come out with better than expected earnings, but we're still seeing the markets kind of come off like we did with the last earnings season. Um, and is that a theme for 2021? It doesn't matter how good your earnings are sometimes, maybe. Um, all right, then we've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average is the reopen trade back in. I think that we're going to continue to see this kind of sector rotation back in and out of tech to the blue chips for the foreseeable future as people start to consolidate, take profits, you know, reallocate, readjust uh, their portfolios, rebalance their portfolios, all of those things. Because when you have these massive rallies, you start seeing sectors in your portfolio start getting overweighted and that's the time to start to readjust that. That could be what we are going to start seeing for the remainder of the year. I do think we're gonna see some volatility here. E-mini S&P is unchanged for the most part. And you can see this with the daily chart break down 30 minute candles here. Continuing to see price acceptance at higher levels. That is bullish. We aren't seeing acceptance of value at lower levels at this point. We're seeing this volatility creep back in the market, but it is really just feeling like sector rotation more than anything uh, to me. All right, so let's talk about what I've been doing in my portfolio. Well, over in my IRA, you guys know I've been long this Ford basically since four dollars or five dollars and eighty-eight cents, I think it was, um, and I bought a probably near those lows of the pandemic, and uh, was able to uh, make a nice little profit on that. I just want to make sure I've got this uh, pricing down. I think it was dollar fifty-five. For some reason, it's it's throwing me a bit of a fit here. Um, as to checking out, and I know why I know. Okay, so I guess I should have been a little bit more prepared for this. <laughs> and uh, I am totally falling apart over here, folks, trying to type and think at the same time, and it's just not working out for me. Everything is uh, really causing some headaches here. But anyway, uh, I think I bought this right around $5.58. I can't get to it right now. But over in my IRA, I had been long this uh, Ford trade since the lows that we were talking about during that pandemic. And I had bought uh, Ford for four, uh, $5 and I'm going to call it 60 cents. It was somewhere very close to that. I can't seem to find the exact pricing right now for some reason. Could be because it was over a year ago. Um, so I was able to get out of that for $12.45 this morning. I wanted to free up some cash in my IRA to roll over into this Coinbase that we are going to be looking at. And I was hoping to have it open up today as of right now, but we aren't seeing that um, happen right now. But I'm going to try and buy this somewhere right around $250. $250.108 is where my bid is. Now that was where we were looking. $250 was where we were looking to open up on this. Last I heard, it was somewhere around $475. So it does not look like I'm going to probably get clipped on mine. I might move that price up to $300 to buy some shares there, but I'm not going to go full boat on this because I want to uh, leave some powder dry in case we get a bit of a correction there in the markets. All right, Gumbel. Um, Gumbel we got as well back in the day when this was really trading much lower. Gumbel, uh, folks, I guess we're gonna struggle all day today. <laughs> Bear with me. All right, so Gumbel, is another trade where I uh, added to my portfolio, uh, my regular trading portfolio. Now, last time when we got involved in this, or at least I put in my uh, my IRA, I was able to get in really at a great strike location. And the, usually when the prices are 
as low as they were when I uh, started trading this gumbel. I didn't usually add stuff like that or I wouldn't normally add stocks that are below $5 to my trading portfolio because I like to have options traded around that. So with that said, uh, when it was trading uh, at around $4.88, which is when I put this trade on for my IRA, I didn't do it in my trading account because like I said, the pricing was generally too low and I like to use options in there. But with it having this pullback, we found a bit of a bottom yesterday with this candle. Now, earlier this morning, we were starting to go into the green and it was looking pretty darn good. So I got involved with buying some gumbel and in my trading account, bought it for $13.37. Now, why didn't I use options for this trade? Well, because the price is so low. If I were to go in there and try to do, say for instance, a poor man's covered call, which is the webinar we're gonna be doing tomorrow on swing trades, finding swing trades for this, I looked at that for this. And the fact of the matter is, is if I go out 200 days and buy, say, the seven and a half calls in there, well, that is going to, or even if I bought the 10 calls in there, I was going to have to put up almost as much money for those calls, the premium on those calls, as if I were just going out there, maybe uh, a little bit more to go out there and just buy the stock. So for me, uh, that kind of you know balance, I, I decided to go out and get involved in the stock rather than to deal with the options and have them expire and all of those things. Any stock that's below $50, especially below $25, that's really the time to think, you know what, it's probably better off just to buy the stock, which is what I decided to do here in uh, Gumbel for my trading account. So, out of Ford in my IRA, looking to add Coinbase to my both my portfolios here, uh, trying to get in at around uh, $251.08, that's where my bid is as of right now, and then I also added Gumbel to my trading portfolio. All right, so the, all of those things, that's where I'm at today. I'm going to keep my eyes on the markets and try and see if we can scoop up some Coinbase. All right, that's all I got. Take a moment to go over our disclaimer as we are an educational company at the end here. And uh, that's all I got. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy. Oh yeah, by the way, smash that like button for me.